Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture plus with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, during my week-long open house at my retail booth in an antique mall, they decided to do it a week long just to keep the number of people down. And unfortunately I had gotten sick and I was able unable to restock. But part of the sale, people bought all my wall decor, which is a blessing. I'm glad that they did. But I had no stock of windows left. I was not prepared for that. So during my two weeks of quarantine, <laughs> I um decided that I needed to get some windows done. I just lost my taste and smell. Um, I wasn't as bad off as my husband where he was a little bit more down and out on the couch for eight days. So I was able to do a little bit of work and when I got tired, I just stopped. So I worked on some windows. So this is what today's video is all about. And I kinda wanted to show you a little bit of the video of my booth, what it looked like after not being able to stock it for two weeks. It was for somebody that's OCD that would not make me happy knowing that I could not go back in and restock. So I thought I would share a little bit of the video. I get asked it a lot of what our booth looks like and I just send you over to my Facebook page because every time I restock I um, update the pictures there. And so then at the end of the video there's also what it looked like after I restocked it. So. So just stay tuned if you want to see that kind of stuff. And so I hope you enjoy my upcycling of some thrifted windows because I absolutely love doing old windows. So here is what my booth looked like after walking in on this for two weeks. This is definitely not how I would leave it. Sometimes people just move things around. It is what it is, you know people that those scissors definitely were not mine <laughs> my husband always says how do you know that oh okay I'm like I thrift everything that goes in my booth and my hands are on everything so when I know exactly when the, one of the items in my booth is not mine so it could have been worse I was very pleased with how the sale went I this is my first time ever even doing a booth so I'm very happy that people bought a lot of the product and I'm glad that I needed to refill no complaints there but definitely not how I would want to have left my booth so here are some of the old windows that have been in my stash and since uh, during my open house I absolutely somehow sold most of my windows and I don't have any more in my stash so we need to get some more made. And sometimes just a simple frame with some pallet wood is a nice piece of wall decor. And then I have thrifted this mirror that needs to be given a new life. Also even though it was a brand new piece it just needed a different look. And then in my hordes of windows I have these very large windows and it sold very well and I got a lot of response from these large windows so I decided that I would make two of these at a time so I had one as backup. I kind of wanted to see how the first one that was this size sold. So for the single pane window this must have been used as a greenhouse at one point because it has some weird nails so the first thing I need to do is go through and use these nippers and remove all the nails. So the first thing I need to do is remove this loose window off the top piece of this very large window. And of course you want to make sure that your safety, you, I have the rubberized gloves on, and of course along with eyewear just in case that it is loose, just in case that it breaks. What I'm doing here is removing any of the excess caulking. That is the only thing keeping this window in place. And then I am going to be wiggling the glass out. And as you see, it must have had a hairline crack because they're so dirty I probably couldn't see that crack, but then it did end up breaking. 
So I find in these older windows that, yep, they, you know, one side is usually broken or cracked, that the caulking is almost gone, and then I always have to go back through, and then they have these little metal inserts that kind of help keep the window in there, and then that's what I'm showing you here. I always go back through and make sure that I get those all pulled out. So after I've gotten any of the broken glass removed, I go into a sand. So what I'm doing to sand is like on these colored windows, I'll try to get as most of it off that I can. I'm not going to work totally aggressively on it. I want to get any chippy paint off. I want to get it so that it's nice and smooth. So I'm not necessarily trying to get it all the way down to bare wood because I am going to be painting over these. And then a couple of these windows still have the latching system on them and then I always go and I remove them and I do end up painting them and sometimes I do replace them on after I finish the window if it's the look that I want but just in case I always make sure that I get them cleaned and painted. So for the glass that is left in the windows, like I said, the, a lot of the caulking has gone, it's dried up. So I always reglaze the windows. I'm reselling these windows as wall decor. I don't want the glass that I don't want removed <laughs> to fall out on anybody. So I just get this glazing at Menards and just reglaze the windows. And I actually tape off first, that way that I can get a clean line when I am glazing. So I really like to buy the glazing in the caulk gun form. It's just easier to apply. So then it kind of has an edge tip that kind of gets into that corner. And then I can take my finger back through and then even it out. It does come in a little tub, but like I said, the caulking way of doing this makes it just a little bit easier to apply. And then I'm not really sure how long it takes that glazing to dry. I just keep on working. I ended, I always end up painting, painting over it anyway. So it ends up drying by the time I'm finished with the window anyway. Now I'm on to working on the two burgundy frames. They are a resin. They're not really a true wood so you can see that they had these corner protectors on them so what i'm doing now is i am removing them and then they also had where they kept the glass in like but when i thrifted them they didn't have any glass in them whatsoever so i'm just taking those little inserts on out just like i did off the windows so now that i have the windows and the frames in the mirror all prepped and sanded and taped and whatever I needed to do with them I can now clean them I'm using my crud cutter it's a great glosser degreaser and yes I'm using them on using it on all the pieces so for these burgundy frames like I told you they are a resin so regular paint just doesn't stick as well to them and I know some people like chalk paint but I keep my minimum my products to a minimum and I try to be very cost efficient so I can resell very cost efficiently so what I'm doing here is I am using the rust-oleum paint and primer in one in flat black I like the way that this adheres to these type of resin products so here's a closer look at this mirror, though this mirror from afar was beautiful, but once you got closer, it has that beautiful beveled glass, but you can see that those whites do not match. And it's actually just a plastic. They put that beautiful beveled glass. So what I did was just tape off the mirror, and then I am spray painting it with a Rust-Oleum paint and primer, just like I did at those resin frames. So now for the windows, I am just using my Kills Paint and Primer. This is a paint that I love. I love the white of it. I use it on everything that I'm going to be using white. It is purchased at Walmart. I get it right off the shelf. No mixing required. So what I'm doing here is I am just painting to clean these windows up. So I'm only going to give them two coats per each side. Yes, I do do the front and the back. And like I said, it's just to clean them up. It's not to make them look crisp and new. These are old windows. That's what they're supposed to look for look like. I just don't want them to look dirty. When it comes to using that spray paint, I like to seal my spray paint in using some polycrylic. This just makes sure that that's longevity, that polycrylic is going to soak through that paint, and then you don't have to worry about your paint, or your spray paint chipping off. 
And now that I have two coats of paint just to make these windows nice and clean on both sides, I'm just going back in with the orbital sander and a 220 sandpaper. And what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that it's nice and smooth and then just giving it a little bit of distressing to those sharp edges. Like I said, I just, I want these to be old windows. I want them to be stressed, but I want them to be clean also. And then to protect that paint, even though there is a primer in the paint, I just like to finish them up with some finishing wax by Verithane. And it's just a wipe on, wipe off kind of wax. So for one of these resin frames, I am doing Rust-Oleum, the paint and primer, and the flat white. I want to give one a black look and I want to give one a white look. So that is what I am doing here is just going to give it one coat just for my white kills paint to stick to so for the black frame and for this mirror i'm just going to finish them up using some waverly antiquing wax and what that's going to do it's going to give one more extra protection coat to these pieces that there's really nothing for them to soak into these products just keep soaking into each other and that'll just make it so that it adheres and i absolutely love what the waverly wax does to black paint it just richens that up and like i said it gives it an extra coat of protection on its finish so I have two windows that are just completely glass and what I want to do on these windows is I want to back them using some fake grain sack like product and so what I do is I am taking a piece of drop cloth that I have already pre-washed and what I'm doing is I'm giving it a tea stain coffee stain dye just to give it that aged look and what I do is I just have this big pot and I just put some tea bags in and my morning coffee pods the insert you know the grainy coffee grounds that are in it in there and I just boil water put the fabric in there and then after it comes to a boil I just turn it off and let it cool until I can wring them out with my hands so while the linen's doing what the linen's doing I go to my silhouette and I've just typed out this farm co family farmstead in that I'm using on the long skinny window I just do a lot of searching on Instagram and Pinterest to find out some original ideas of wording to put on windows or any of my signs. So this is just what I came up with. Remember, I do farmhouse decor. So what I've done here is I've taped off where my center where I need my wording to go. And now I am attaching my words onto my window. So since I've already have it all centered, and I'm just using the bottom part of the vinyl that it's attached to so that it doesn't hear and then gingerly just working my wording down little by little keeping it centered that's where that tape and spending time to measure off where I want everything to be comes in very handy so here is what the piece of drop cloth the tea stain coffee stain dyed and then I do dry it in the dryer it does kind of make coffee grounds in your dryer but they do come out so what I'm doing if if you're new to my channel I love grain sack striping so on these windows I'm going to do some grain sack striping on, on the back of these windows so what I'm doing here is I do one piece of tape and that'll be my center and then on the other side on each side I'm going to lay another piece of tape and then I will remove that middle piece of tape because that'll be where my first painted stripe goes so I'm going to be doing multiple stripes on this and so what I'm doing now is I'm doing one more stripe on the one side the middle stripe is about an inch and this is maybe a quarter inch and then I will do the same thing I'll put another piece of tape on the other side measuring about a quarter inch so I kind of have a rhyme and reason of what I am doing and I think that's why I love grain sack stripe you can do as many or as little or take away or add on what you want so see here I changed my mind I'm like nope now I'd want smaller stripes and so that's what I'm changing my mind to because I'm only going to be doing one grouping on the back of this drop cloth then if you're wondering i do have pieces of cardstock underneath my fabric so it doesn't get onto my island so my go-to is always this multi-use by apple barrel and 
I love it in black, so that is what I'm going to be using. And so when I'm painting on my stripes, I do a makeup sponge that I get at the Dollar Tree, and I kind of do a light sliding technique. I don't really kind of bounce it like you would be doing on wood, because then I find that you kind of get spots. So what I do is I kind of do the dab on, dab off, it's not so much paint on the sponge and then just let the fabric grab the paint and then I work in one direction and then after I get it down that direction then I work back and then that's my final color just whatever the fabric wants to grab the paint now I will admit I am not very good at letting paint dry so I do use the assistance of a blow dryer and yep you can use the blow dryer to help dry this paint on the fabric also so that way I can move on to my next stripes so this is why I use masking tape. I can see through the masking tape and I buy the masking tape at the dollar store. So it's very cost efficient. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically centering my stripe in the middle of that masking tape. That way I have a little bit of a space that's going to be unpainted before I get on to my next stripe. Then whatever I did on this side, I will go and do on the other side. So I'll put that piece of masking tape over that other stripe that's already been painted centering it in the middle so i have a little bit of space in between the stripes that would be unpainted and then the same thing putting another piece of tape on the other side and then doing the same technique with that sponge where i just put a little bit of paint on it and then slide it down the pieces of masking tape and letting the fabric grab what kind of the paint that it wants to grab and doing the same thing working one one direction and then working in the other direction and then since this is going on the back of the window there's no need for me to iron it to make it smooth to the touch so right now what i'm doing is trying to center where i want those stripes to be i knew that i cut this fabric a little bit large so i'm just trying to eyeball where i think those stripes will be the best so now I am attaching it using my electric staple gun. If you do a lot of stapling, I highly suggest one of these. I do a lot of windows and a lot of reupholstering, so this comes in very handy. So what I'm doing here is I am just stapling it down and making sure that my, because I have a stripe on it, I want to make sure that my stripe is staying nice and level. And no, I did not iron this fabric. I wanted it to look used and abused. And as I pull it tight, it will stretch those wrinkles out. I liked the way that this looked on the back of this. Usually I would iron it, but as you see, as I'm pulling it, it more tightly, it takes those wrinkles out. So as I staple on here, I try to make it so that they are pretty straight because I know that I'm going to have to go back through and cut off the excess fabric. So I find the easiest way is to take a ruler and a rotary cutter, but you know those are very, 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 very sharp. So go very gingerly, don't try to go very fast. So that's what I'm doing here. And then if it did not go all the way through, then I just take my fabric shears and cut the rest of it off just to make that clean line. So now I'm on to making the stripes for the much larger window. As you can see, this takes up most of my island. And so, like I said, I just absolutely love doing grain sack stripings because I do not have to do the same thing every time. So I don't know if you all get bored of watching me do grain sack stripings, but I can't tell you how addicted I am to doing them. I absolutely love I love them every time that I do them. So it's the same thing. You put two pieces of, you know, piece of tape down wherever you want to eyeball your first stripe to be. And then a piece of tape on either side. And then remove that center piece of tape because that will be where your first paint stripe is. And I did the same technique using the sponge and the painting technique. For this one, I'm going to be using five stripes. So what I'm doing is a large stripe in the middle, and then I'm going to do half that size on either side. So this is my spacing. I overlapped the two, and that way I have another on either side, about, you know, half the size of the first stripe. And then it's the same painting technique. And after removing the tape, I now you can see where I centered my tape over. That's why I love the masking tape. You can see, so I have my space. Then I want my, my 
space for the next stripes to be half the size it was for the last two stripes that I just painted. Now for this window, because I did five stripes, I want to keep it very simple. And I like the farmhouse of this whole package, this whole stencil here. So what I am doing is I'm removing everything else out of it, and then I'm just going to be keeping this farmhouse. And then for this one, I'm going to have to use a no mat, meaning it's going to be larger than a 24 image. And so I'm just going to size it to the size that I feel is that it, I can make it as big as I want, but I can make it the height of 12, but does it distort it? See how it distorts the letters? So then I just want to make it pleasing to the eye. So I'm going to do it like I've done in the past where I make a tape line so I know that I am nice and level and nice and centered and then where I cut that vinyl backing halfway so I'm not trying to attach this whole thing at the same time so that way I know that I, because vinyl sticks very fast to glass and I know somebody said about wetting but I'm not ready quite to try that technique maybe on a small smaller item so this is just what has been working out for me so for this I just cricket out the old to go on top of the farmhouse and I'm just centering it in between those two loops of the f and the h so now I am eyeballing. I like to do my vinyl first, my lettering first, and then if I had put stripes or anything on the back of it, then I like to attach the fabric. That way I can make sure that it is pleasing to my eye of where the stripes end up on my lettering. And so it's the same process. I'm just using the staple gun to adhere it and making sure that my stripes have stayed straight. And like I said, using the staple gun and pulling it tight takes away those wrinkles so no worries there and then i will go back through and cut off the excess using the ruler and the rotary cutter so as you see chris cut down pieces of pallet wood to fit into the frames and into the missing spaces in the window and what i'm doing now is i am just doing a dry brushing of some white paint that kind of blends everything in together since palette wood's a little bit on the dirty side and a little bit rough this just kind of gives it a finished look so the dry brushing is where you just have a little bit of paint on and i just let it hit that those high spots of the wood then after that paint's dry, I go back in with the orbital sander and some 220. That palette wood is definitely very rough, and I just want to blend the two pieces together. So this will be removing some of the paint in case I get it dark in some spots, and then also making it nice and smooth. So I had fallen in love with these stars that I had picked up from the dollar store. I think they're a Christmas thing but I absolutely love adding them to my farmhouse windows. So what I'm showing you here is that I have to remove the tags and then fill in that little hole, put in a piece of tape on the back of it, and then sanding that off and then giving them a spray paint. It's really just a, a flimsy balsam wood, so the spray paint works just fine, and I was doing a whole bunch of them, and it didn't take much to get these to cover. And I did seal them with a polycrylic. I'm sorry I did not get video of that. But now after that polycrylic dried, I'm going back in with some 220 sandpaper and distressing those edges so you can see some of that natural wood. And then running some steel wool, a fine grit steel wool over the top of them just to make them that they're nice and smooth. And then finishing them off with using the Waverly Antiquing Wax, which will just richen that up and get that little edge where I showed some of that natural through and just blend in with this pallet wood beautifully. And then to glue them on the pallet wood, it's nice because the balsam wood is very thin that I just use some E6000 for a permanent grit and for a permanent grip and then just some hot glue for that quick and then I will set something heavy on them and let them um, dry overnight to make sure that they're good and secure. So being that you already saw me put vinyl on a window and I did try some of the processes that some other people had suggested and so I liked the farmhouse on this design so what I did is I clicked on the design and then I deleted everything I didn't want and kept the farmhouse and then on this one I wanted to add the old to it so I used this font to I like how you add the two different 
fonts together. And then on this one, I just use this big, thick farmhouse. I just absolutely love that. And then the same thing with this window. I just wanted the farmhouse on this. And so that's the nice thing about the Silhouette Cameo for me is their designs. I can take them apart and use them. And then, yes, if you were wondering, do we put a hanging system on? Yes, we do. These windows are old and they are heavy. That glass is heavy. So we want to make sure that that hanging system is nice and secure and that wire is nice and strong. So I have to say, when I thrifted this mirror, I really did think that I was going to make it white. But after seeing how the whites didn't match and then getting my first coat of black, I just absolutely loved it in black. And I don't think I've ever done a mirror in black, but I love that beveled mirror. And I thought, you know, why not? So when it came to this frame and then the other one that is white, I just decided just to keep them plain and simple, not add anything onto them. Let the person who buys them add a wreath or let them do whatever they want with it. I had done that with one that I'd taken a lavender off because I figured lavender was done with the season and it just makes it more costly for me to add a wreath. So then not everybody has access to pallet wood, so I am just leaving them plain for the next person to use them and do what they want with them. Now we'll get into my loves, my love of old windows. I just absolutely love making old windows into farmhouse decor. I absolutely love doing that grain sack striping on it. I love tea staining and coffee stain in that drop cloth. And I love coming up with new sayings. And I know this grouping had a lot of farmhouse, but the farmhouse saying seems to have been selling well for me and you do what the buyer wants if they want you know not everybody's putting a hundred farmhouse sayings in their house and I do love these dollar store stars I just am still amazed with how they just look so high-end and how it just helps keep the cost down for the buyer by being able to put something so simple that just makes it pop on these beautiful old windows and I don't know if you can tell how a beast of a window that this one is. When I thrifted these and bought them off Marketplace, I really didn't know the size. I had never run across those big of windows, so I was so happy when I had that idea for this, those three stars. And I love this big, chunky farmhouse on this huge, beautiful window. And to me, the pallet wood and the farmhouse and just making that window frame still be distressed and still look old but just be clean to me it just is a timeless classic look that you could just have this piece forever so here is my booth all cleaned up just things rearranged and just placed a little bit differently and some new furniture pieces brought in some of most of this you will recognize from thrift hauls or youtube videos because pretty much most all of it I do a YouTube video on to share the ideas with you all. So I thank you if you watched the video all to the end. I hope that you were like, if you had not seen my booth before, I hope it was okay for you. I absolutely love getting to decorate a booth. I wish it was bigger sometimes that I could just put everything in that I make. You know, what one thing sells, something doesn't sell. You just, there's no rhyme and reason. It just takes that one person that's looking for that one item. So I don't get sad when something sits there and it hasn't sold. Sometimes I trade it out or sometimes I move it around. It's, that's just how the retail business goes. You just never know. Like I said, it only takes one person to want to buy it. So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And like always, don't forget to give me a comment of which one of my flipped 
windows with wall decor that you liked. I absolutely love doing the green sack on the back of them and I love I like the tips. I love that people give me tips on how to put vinyl on windows. So again, I thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you are part of my YouTube family, thank you so much because you have helped my channel grow. And just you watching my videos, giving me a quick like and a comment lets YouTube know that you like my kind of content. So if you're new to my channel and visiting it for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button. And like always, don't forget to hit that notification bell of when I've uploaded a new video. Thanks for watching.